Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to my sewing room. Now I have been spending all week working on my sewing room reorganization, which is a video that is going to be coming soon when I finish that reorganization, but it's not done and it's Saturday evening and I really want to give you a vlog video. So I've decided that this is the perfect time to pull out one of the smaller projects on my to-do list, and that is a Victorian apron. I have been wanting to make a Victorian apron for quite some time now. Like literally, it's been on my whiteboard since I got the whiteboard, and it's been in my head since before I got the whiteboard, and that was in the summer. So I have been wanting to do this for a while. It's just something that I feel like is a fun accessory to have and a good accessory to also have for history bounding. Not that it's very practical to wear a white apron for like functional cooking needs, but I just want one because they're just so pretty. So I am finally going to take this opportunity to make one. Hopefully I can finish this tonight. So we shall see. I hope that it's an easy project. I am going to be working with a base pattern of Butterick 6229. You probably recognize this pattern because I have used it before. I think I used the body of the dress for the Hussif dress, if I remember correctly, I'm not positive. But I'm going to go ahead and use the apron now, which I believe I've already cut out when I was cutting out the Hussif dress. And I'm probably not going to do it exactly as is though, because there are some things that I want a little different in my apron. For one thing, I really want pockets. So I'm gonna be adding pockets. For two, I don't know that I want pin tucks. And this has several pin tucks, four on the body and four on the skirt. And I just don't know that that is something that I really need. And also, I don't really like how low the apron is on this pattern. So I feel like I just want it a little bit higher up so it's a little bit more functional. So that is something that I also plan to change. But otherwise, hopefully it'll be mostly the same. And I'm also hoping that by omitting the pin tucks, I can actually kind of use that same pattern piece just to make it higher. So we shall see, but let's go ahead and dive into this hopefully really quick project. So I've got all of my pattern pieces here and I've looked at them all and kind of determined all of the different changes that I'm making. So for one thing, I'm actually shortening the apron. I am taking off most of the pin tucks on the bottom, but I think I'm going to leave two pin tucks. That said, it still needs to be shortened. For one thing, this apron pattern has a really deep hem, like a three or four inch hem, which I kind of want a two inch hem, but that's still way too long. So basically there's a fold line on the bottom of the pattern and I'm just going to chop it on the fold line. And from there I can do my couple of pin tucks and I can do like about a two and a half inch hem, two inch deep plus the half inch fold over at the top. And that will be nice and I don't know, the right length for me. Because again, I wanna do this as like something that I can also use for history bounding. And the skirt that I'm wearing right now is one of my longest skirts that I ever wear. So basically I'm looking at this apron attempting to be not really any longer than this skirt. So about the length of this skirt is what I'm going for. And then the other thing is that even with taking out the pin tucks on the apron front, it is so short that I still have to add length. So I'm adding an inch and a half of length plus not doing the pin tucks to this front piece. And the way that this front piece is designed is that it has like the fold over at the top and then this is the actual length of the back. And I'm just going to do it the same length on both sides. So it will be like this, but this will be longer. Actually, they'll both be longer and they'll be even is my point. But that way I can still kind of have that fold over and get my, I, I think, I don't, I haven't looked at the instructions yet, but get this like inside turned in so I can just sew it like that. That way the only, you know, raw edge, which I will still serge, is at the bottom and that goes into the waistband. So that is that part. The other thing is that I didn't realize that this pattern actually has you create a ruffle for the sides of the straps and I don't really see a point in that. So I'm going to use eyelet lace. I have enough of it in my stash that I should be able to do both straps, maybe even all the way front like waist to waist in the back. Plus I would like to put a little bit right here at the top of this. And I realized that this apron might be kind of like a strapped version of the Hussif apron pattern, minus of course all of the needles and trim and accoutrement that are on that apron. This will be a practical, more Victorian version. 
but those are all of the changes that I'm going to be making. So now I can go ahead and start cutting into the fabric. I'm going to be using Pimatex cotton for this, which I don't think I made the Hussif apron out of. I can't remember, but I did make the petticoat for the Hussif out of Pimatex. I usually like to use Pimatex for petticoats, but this apron, I just kind of wanted it sturdier than muslin. And so I figured the Pimatex was perfect and I already have it in my stash. So let's get cutting. Why does cutting take so freaking long? That said, it is just past nine o'clock and I have finally finished cutting everything. So I definitely deviated from the pattern in the straps because the straps to me made no sense. Now, granted, I have yet to really look at the pattern instructions, but I don't tend to actually follow pattern instructions. I usually just use the pattern pieces and then make up my own instructions because I, you know, I like making my life harder. And so looking at the pattern straps on here, they just, they're not great. First off, the waistband seems super, super short, like no matter what size you are, it shows in the diagram of this apron that the, the waistband should go to about like here, but the actual waistband, if you hold it up to my waist, goes to about like here. So I don't like that. So I made the waistband longer. I also made it so the waistband, I think mine is a little bit wider, I think. Uh, and I did cut my waistband in two pieces, like the pattern, but I think they also said to interface it, which I probably should on the waistband, but I might not do. We'll see. And then they called for interfacing on the straps, which I don't like that idea. And for the straps, they called for two pieces with seams on both sides, which to me, it's just like, well, why don't you make your life easier and just do one long piece with one seam, you know, turn it inside out to do your tube turning. And then also the straps were way too short. They, if I held them at my waist here, they wound up hitting about here, which, you know, not my waist. So I did lengthen the straps. And then also the ties on the apron and the pattern were super, super short. Like if the waist ended here, the length of ties could probably barely tie in a tiny little knot. And I want big looping bows because Victorian apron. So my ties are significantly longer. My shoulder straps are 42 inches long, which might be a tiny bit long, but I wanted to give myself some wiggle room. And then my ties are 40 inches long each. And again, with the ties, they had it constructed where you cut four, do seams on both sides, which again, doesn't make sense. So I am again doing one and then fold over seam on one side. And mine are 40 inches long, which is like way bigger than <laughs> their pattern piece. So that all took me a lot of figuring out of lengths and stuff for what to do, but I do now have everything cut out and I even washed the dirt off of the front of the apron piece where Dora decided, oh, it'd be a great idea to just jump up on my sewing table with muddy feet. So thanks, Kat. <sighs> okay, now it's time to assemble everything and hope that it goes very quickly because again, it's like 9.15. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to serge around all of my apron pieces, as in like the skirt apron pieces, and I'm going to sew those together. So there are three pieces, a center and then two kind of side pieces. And on the inside of the apron, it's just going to be serged seams. Like I don't care about doing felling, whatever. This is an apron. So <laughs> I'm just going to serge all those edges and assemble and then uh, it'll be gathered at the top. So that'll be the next thing. Serge, assemble and gather that at the top. And I will come back to you when that is done. So I haven't actually done that serging yet because I almost forgot pockets. And so I just cut these out really quickly. I made sure that they're large enough for my cell phone, probably some other things. These are eight and three quarter inches this way by seven inches this way. And they will be folded in on the sides like this. I'm going to serge these edges and then just fold them in and top stitch. So like 
yes, I can touch the serging inside the pocket, but again, whatever, it's an apron pocket. And then once those are folded over, the top will be folded in twice because I do want a nice clean line there. And that will be sewn down before the pocket is attached to the apron. These, by the way, will have to get attached to the apron before I do the gathering. And honestly, I might do the pin tucks before I do the gathering too. I just feel like that might be easier. So I will take a look at that probably before I do the gathering. But I'm going to do all of that now. But yeah, that is what I'm doing next. So this is the pocket. This is where Dora stood on my fabric. So that'll be the inside of the pocket because on the outside kind of looks dirty too. Dang it, Dora. Okay, let's try to wash this off. All right, a new piece of fabric has been cut since her little muddy paw print absolutely refused to come off of that other piece. And so to determine approximately where I want the pockets, what I've done here is I've actually pinned the center of the apron to my skirt and pinned the side seam of the apron also to my skirt and then just kind of like held this in a gather so that I don't have to like take out any gathering stitches and put my hand down. And then I put pins here where I wanted the pocket to be. I don't know if you can see those because they are white, but I have a pin here, a pin here, a pin here. My pocket's a little bit larger than that, but I know that that is approximately where I want the pocket to be because that way I can reach the bottom of my pocket for one, but it's also like a comfortable place to keep things. And so I'm going to take this, you know, unpin it from my skirt and lay it flat. Make sure that that's like straight up and down copy those marks to this side as well and put my pockets on and I will show you how those pockets go together. This is one of my pockets. This is the top of the pocket, the bottom of the pocket, and the two sides. I did not serge this side because it's actually the selvage edge, so it doesn't really matter. And then this one I did serge, this I did serge, this I'm turning twice, so I didn't serge this one either. So what we're going to do here to make these pockets is we're going to just like fold the side uh, I eyeballed about like three eighths of an inch or so, and you're just going to press that into place. Do the same thing here. And the same on the bottom. One thing that I prefer to do when you get to like a corner like this is I prefer to kind of tuck it in and press that because that way you won't risk it sticking out over the side. I'm gonna even that one a little bit. And then the top gets folded down twice. And this we're actually going to sew first before we put this pocket on, we're gonna sew the top. And again, I'm doing like about three eighths of an inch. And this one, again, I am going to tuck in and tuck in over here as well. Now I'm going to sew right along that fold and then this pocket will be ready to put on. So I've done my seam right up here and my pins are still in here. This is the side that I pinned and I'm putting it just over the edge of the pin and then I spaced it equally on these side pins to know where it is. I've laid this ruler here against the seam so that I can get a pretty good idea if I'm going straight up and down, which I am. And this one is now ready to sew on and then I will copy all of these space markings to the other side and put the other pocket on. By the way, to copy my markings, because this fabric is white and like kind of semi-sheer, all I've done is I've folded this over and lined up my side seams here, and now I can see the other pocket through, and I can just lay this pocket on top, 
and pin that into place so that it's exactly on top of the other pocket, just making sure obviously not to pin through to get the other side of the fabric. Okay, friends, I have a word of warning for you. These skirt pattern pieces are fairly straight, but not quite straight. So don't be like me and when you go to mark your pockets, pin your skirt on or pin your apron skirt on upside down and then put your pockets on upside down so that they actually wind up upside down at the bottom of your skirt. Don't be like me. It's only 1015. I should not be making these kind of mistakes yet. Those are reserved for like one in the morning, at which point I should be long done with this project, but not if I keep making stupid mistakes like this. So now I'm going to unpick the pocket. I've already gone and marked where it now should go so that it's, you know, right side up where I can actually reach it. And I'm going to redo those pockets. And the reason that I found out that it was upside down was because I went to go start looking at like the hem and the pin tucks and stuff and realized that the hem on the side back of the apron looked like really, really weird. Oh yeah, that's because it's the waist. And that's because there's a little bit of shaping at the hip, which was causing that hem to be really, really off. So don't be like me. I will see you when I fix this problem. I have finished the hem. What I did was I turned it up half inch and then two inches. So there's a little half inch to hide the, you know, unfinished edge. And then it's two inches and I stitched right near the top of the two inches all the way across. Now I'm looking at the pin tucks and I have determined that I want the space in between the top of the hem and the bottom pin tuck to be 5 8 inches and I want the pin tuck to be 3 8 inches so I am going to make a mark one inch up and probably draw a line on that it will be my crease fold and then I can just use the markings on my sewing machine to do the 3 8 inches but I have to admit like Pima Tex is one of the fabrics that friction pens don't fully fully erase from they mostly do but you can probably see there's a very faint line there I kind of figure that if it is on the very crease it's probably okay because it'll be on a crease so like no one will notice so that is my plan. I'm gonna do that and then make a fold along that line and then sew 3 8 inches from there. And I'll probably do the one on top of that the exact same 5 8 inches up and then 3 8 inch of a tuck. Quick edit to that last thing that I said for the pin tuck. It's not that it's one inch up where I draw the line because that would actually be the crease itself. It's actually one and 3 8 inches up. That is the crease is in the outside of the fold instead of the inside of the tuck, so like that. So this is the fold that I'm going to be drawing on because that's the one that then it will be easy to crease on. And then basically when you're doing a pin tuck, you just have the fabric folded like this and then you're doing your 3 8 inches in from here. And then when you press that out, you wind up with a lovely little pin tuck. So the line that I'm drawing to make that fold is 1 and 3 8 inches up from here. The pin tucks are all done, so now it is time to hem up the sides and then finally do the gathering at the waist. So I'm just going to turn this under twice so that it's a nice clean hem and then I will run two rows of gathering stitching up at the top of the waist and then we can move on to the top of this apron. So I did the first step of the waistband here, which is just taking one of my waistband strips and putting it right sides together with the gathered section, making sure that I matched up so that there'd be a half inch extra seam allowance on the edge and then matching the centers. And I also measured my waist where my side is and I matched the side on the waistband with the side seam. So that's all together. Now I can move on to the apron front. Now the apron front, I'm going to, I don't need to, but I'm going to serge around all of these sides just so that I can keep it nice and flat. It's on the fold and then right sides right now are facing out. And this is going to wind up going into straps on either side, which is why these can be raw. They just need to be together somehow. And to me, it's easiest just to do that on the serger. So I'm going to go ahead and serge those edges and then I'm going to attach the strap piece right sides together on each side obviously but right sides together 
uh, starting down at the bottom. And the strap piece, if you remember, is cut on, cut so that it will be on the fold. So that this is the center. So basically it will be right sides here. And then this will fold out at the press out at the seam and then fold over here and come back on the side over there. And then there will be trim on the outside there. So I'm going to go ahead and attach all of that together and then add the eyelet trim, which will go around the sides of the straps plus the uh, top of the neckline here. I'm just going to do all of this on machine and the eyelet trim is going to just kind of go behind so it'll look like top stitching from the front here. So I just wanted to pop on and show you how I'm doing the straps here because I was a little bit confused at first. I had already attached them to the bib front here. This is the bottom of the bib, top of the bib. And then I was like, oh, well, how do I actually turn them into tubes? Because there's a bib attached now. So what I'm doing is I'm basically making the top into tubes up here so this is all pinned right sides together ready to be sewn together and then that will be turned into a tube and then this part will actually be once the tube is done will be folded over and sewn into place like stitched in the ditch um once all of this is sorted so yeah i was a little bit confused at first but i think that this is the best way to go and then the trim will be added along this side except once it's right side out so I'm using the fast turn tubes that I showed in my like recommended tools video recently and I just insert the tube in from the bib apron side and just push the fabric all along. Now normally like if you have a tube that has an end you will just obviously stop and you will push the little spirally doohickey. I don't think this is going to show up very well on the screen, but it's got a little spiral and you would push it into the top seam. But since this one doesn't have a top seam, we will put it in the tube and just kind of fold over this bit here so that we have a seam to go through. And then you just want the little spiral to go through the fabric and you just twist it until it does. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. And then you just pull that back through the tube, just like that. And in this case, since we can't pull the bulk of the bib through, I will actually release the spiral by twisting the other way and then pull this tube back through. And we have a right side out tube that we just have to press now so super super easy again i highly recommend those tubes they're one of my favorite tools and they just make turning tubes way easier so now i'm going to press this and then once that's pressed this part just gets pressed in on the very edge and then pressed over the seam allowance like so <laughs> i'll show you when it's done so all of the eyelet trim is on the bib now. You're looking at the inside of it right now. And I have attached the bib to the waistband. So now I'm trying to figure out the best way to put the back of the waistband on because I want it to be all neat and contained all of these bits here. So what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to fold this back down and then attach right sides together on the top part here of the waistband and then bring it over, fold the edge of the waistband and stitch in the ditch for above the skirt portion of that. So that should work. And I have decided that I'm not interfacing the waistband. I just, it seems silly. It's an apron, like it doesn't need a thick, stiff, bulky waistband. And then I have to attach the ties and I'm still not 100% sure how to do that yet either but I have to figure that out. I'm thinking that I actually might do the ties first and do the whole, they're just tubes, so I think I'm gonna create the tubes and then seam them right here because then I can encase that in the other side of the waistband. So yeah, I think that is my plan. I'm gonna go ahead and make those tubes and give that a try. So it is almost done. I just need to fold the waist band under and then stitch that down but I decided I would put it on and see how it's going and I realized that I made a mistake 
and that is I made the neckline too high because I have a pretty serious curve like above the bust point and by having it this high with crossing the straps it does this so that is not what I want that would be to catch food instead of like you know protect or whatever so it just needs to come down a little bit I think it needs to come down like about three quarters of an inch maybe about an inch and then it'll be perfect now I know that this was on the fold but there's no reason that I can't just like cut it and roll it down instead it means that I'll have to undo it from the straps right here and I will have to redo the lace at the top but that's not a big deal that said it's 1 20 in the morning right now and I just feel like that's not something that I should be doing at one in the morning the other thing that I forgot and I realized as I was doing the waistband is that the straps do need to like get put into the waistband so that I might actually do right now just really quickly just open up that seam and do that because I haven't again put the seam down on the other side folded it down on the other side and I don't want to forget to do this tomorrow so I think since I already have it pinned in place and the length fits great I think I'm going to go ahead and do that and that way all I'll have to do in the morning is just fix that and then I can go take pictures of the finished apron so very close but I guess it didn't turn out to be a one evening project after all and certainly not a three hour project like I planned it I think we are at hour five plus at this point so <laughs> uh yeah I definitely underestimated this one but it's pretty like it has the cute eyelet lace it's got pockets it's got the little tucks so I'm definitely happy with how it looks other than this bit right here but it does need a little bit of tweaking so I'll make it better in the morning. So I fixed the strap in the back and then I started to take off the eyelet lace in the front so that I could fix this tomorrow. But then I realized, why am I doing this? I could just like tuck this half into the straps further. So I am going to leave the rest of this tomorrow because it is quite late, but I am going to put the eyelet lace back on. And all I've done over here is that I've moved the top part. I've got to go a little bit farther down to undo it, but I've moved the top part over by about like a half an inch that way. And I'll do the same thing over here. And that should get rid of that wrinkle, but still give me the higher neckline of the apron that I want to make it a little bit more functional and it'll be the best of both worlds. So that means that tomorrow morning, all I have to do is finish this bit and then tuck the waistband facing down and sew that in place and it will be complete. So pretty close. I will do that tomorrow and I will see you then. It's a new day and I am making the last couple changes for this apron. I've already done the facing at the waistband. So again, I just kind of turned up the edge and then pressed it down and stitched that in the ditch right along here. And so that all is done. It's just this neckline bit. And so kind of what I determined was that it was high, but not high. <laughs> the fabric itself was not too high, but adding the ruffle at the top of the fabric made it too high. So since I already had the ruffle most of the way off, I just took it off the rest of the way and moved it down, I think a full inch so that now it's like the ruffle just goes, there's the apron part behind the ruffle. And then I have also, I've taken this seam on each side out to about the apex of the bust and I have slid the bib part into the straps more. So it goes pretty much all the way to where the edge of the straps are right here. It does create a little bit of a wrinkle and it's still like a skosh big like half a centimeter or something it's you know super small but it's all pinned in place right now and I think that this is a good fit for the top of this apron so it's it's actually like fitted to me now and it's curving up above the bust which is really what I needed so I'm going to go ahead and stitch just top stitch right here along these straps I'll probably top stitch it all the way down to the waist just so it looks even all the way and that's it. I'm done. So I will come back to you as soon as that is finished.
that's it. So overall, I am very pleased with how this project turned out. Was it the super quick project that I anticipated that it would be? No. Was it still a relatively quick project? Yes, I would say altogether it took me about six, no, like seven hours or so. So it wasn't too bad. And some of that was mistakes and two hours of that was cutting because I was also on a video chat while cutting and that distracted me. So I'm sure it would have been a lot faster had I not been doing that. Overall, I do recommend this pattern at least as a base pattern. So if you have the butter pattern, go ahead and give it a try because it really is not too bad. Again, I really didn't follow the, the instructions and I only followed like half the pattern pieces, but it's a good start. So I just want to thank you for joining me this week. If you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this on Tuesdays and the new upload date for my other videos, Saturdays. <laughs> but I do post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram. I'm at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to support me and all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Kofi account down below. Once again, thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!